Yo, what up? Welcome back. Sober experience. After a brief pause. Pause. Yeah, holiday season is upon us. And um, this might be the last one before uh, Christmas. And then maybe after Christmas, we'll do something. Uh, I got a couple of guests in the uh, in the pipeline. Some uh, some nice ladies. Either way, we're going to set this joint off right. Yo, I love, I love the winter. I wish it still got cold and whatever in New York, but it fucking don't. But the winter makes me just remind. It not makes me remind. It just reminds me of like when I was a kid, you know. But anyway. Let's do a little M-O-B-B. Let's set this episode off right, boy. So for all y'all niggas out there that be popping shit, when the music go Hold on, up. y'all listen to this, all right? Have you got the you know what yeah. I'm saying? To all the killers and the hundred dollar billers. This is Sea Lover. Take it to the streets. The for real, niggas who ain't got no feelings. Shut up, shut up. I'm talking to you. Shot to make you levitate. Check it out now. My gun shot to make you levitate. Check it out now. My gun shot to make you levitate. My gun shot to make you levitate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, it's very hard um, to compete with. Well, I just dropped the phone. Hang on. Okay, I got it. Um, yeah, it's very hard to compete with the freaking 90s. It's very hard to compete with Mob Deep. It's very hard to compete with a lot of things. Yeah, man, just put you right in the mood. I remember, bro, come on, winter time. Man, yeah, winter was the best when I was a kid, man. It was just like very free, you know, free. You'd just be outside, you know. I mean, when I mean kid, I mean like. Not like a like a little kid, but I mean like a teenager. Man, there's nothing like trooping to the weed spot in the fucking blizzard. You know? You got all your gear on and you you know. Yeah, you walk into the weed spot. And I don't even know. They don't even have those things really anymore that I know. When I was a kid, I, I, I'm sorry. When I was a young person, a young adult. <clears throat> you had to go and get your own um, your own party. Yeah, to go to a weed spot, man. Somebody would tell you where the weed spot is. You go, you knock on the door, they open the door, and depending on the vibes, they either sold you some weed or they didn't, or they whatever. You know, it wasn't just like, hey, we'll just take anybody's friggin' money. I don't know why it was like that. I never, I never, I never worked in a weed spot. I never owned a weed spot. You know, I hung out. And as I got older, I, I became friendly with a couple of kids that worked in one. And we would, it's the most boring shit ever. In your mind, you're like, wow, what's behind this door? Is it like magic? You know, because I remember the first time I went to one, like a real one. I was in, what grade was I in? It might have been seventh grade. Was it, se- it had to have been seventh grade. Man, damn. Junior high school started seventh grade. And I was, I was hanging out with these kids, and um, I had already started gravitating towards, um, you know, people who um, like to party. Yeah, people like to get drunk and get high and chase girls and people who like to try and matter, you know. And, um, yeah, it was wild because, all right, so when I got to junior high school, you know, it was, um, yeah, it was, I don't know, it's whatever. I don't want to glorify anything, but it was a tough school. It was a tough school. Compared to the other junior high schools that were in the area, you know, and um, yeah, yeah, it just, it was a tough school. And they had a good mix of kids, but the kids that were smart were really fucking brilliant, and I knew a bunch of them, and I was cool with a bunch of them, 
And the kids who were tough, you know, were really tough. You know, were really tough. And um, there was like, there was like a lot of identity. Like, oh, I'm, I'm going to this school. I'm going to, I went to Kakiat Junior High School. It sounds like a very, you know, you're like, what the fuck kind of name is that? And our name, our, 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 um, our mascot was the Braves, but we didn't have any, yeah, whatever, before uh, all the woke shit. So we were the Khaki Ad Braves, and we didn't um, have any mascot. We didn't have a Brave nothing. You know, when I got there, junior high school, so junior high school up in the woods was 7th, 8th, and ninth grade, right? And this was what year? I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now, boy. One second, one, nine, seven, nine, plus 12. Bro, this is 1991. Are you kidding me? 91, 92. Damn, those were like, you start thinking about that. You're just like, oh my God, bro. 91, 92, that was amazing. You know, it was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. So, I know I said that like three times. So I'm thinking about all the rap music, all the metal music, you know, um... You know, grunge was on its way. You know, everything. It was just like a, it was like a fucking, it was like a fireball waiting to get blasted off. Anyway, so I hung out with this kid, uh, John. Right. And you could buy weed in school, which was fine with people who sold weed. And I was in seventh grade. Um, Yeah, I was in seventh grade. So, but. So I started hanging out with this kid, John, my other friend, Kevin. Um, I don't want to give full names. Um, we were like like these little cronies. Yeah, we were like these little cronies. Anyway, so there were, there were older kids that were like in ninth grade. And they, uh, they liked us uh, because we were crazy. That was it. Now, my other uh, group of friends... You know, my other crew, we were also like, you know, we're normal bored kids, man. Normal bored kids. Bro, we used to just break into houses, steal cars, all that other shit. You know, break into houses, steal cars, chase girls. You know, but I, they weren't, you know, they were still like on the up and up. So that thing... And, and, you know, they were riding dirt bikes and shit. I didn't do any of that. I, I mean, I broke into houses. I stole cars. Or they, bro, it was so wild. Like, they would come pick me up from my house in a stolen car. And I'd tell my mom and dad, all right, see you later. And they'd be like, okay. You know? And I'm like, yeah. So, either way, point is, is that, so I go to first we spot my other friend, John. So, I had friends that I hung out and I got fucking bl- ob- obliterated with. Then I had friends that I hung out and I committed, I guess, crimes with. Um, all the while trying to chase the next hot girl, going to basement parties. Because uh, my friend in the criminal, I guess I would say criminal crew, uh, my boy Drew, he was like a little, he was like a local DJ. So we, he, we'd be at the basement, it's like, oh, Drew's DJing over here. So we go over there and like, you know, it's 1991, you're 12 years old, you're hugging up on girls and dancing 90s dance hall reggae, you know, you're basically kind of like just you know, feeling on some booty, getting the first bass, doing some outside Z's kind of thing. You know, we call outside Z's above the shirt, inside Z's is underneath, obviously. Nobody's getting too, too wild. But, um, you know, so me and my boy John, we're like, bro, we're going to need, you know, once I, st- once I rang that bell, it was smoking weed and drinking. I didn't stop until I stopped, right? I was a, I was an addict from the beginning. But so we go to this weed spot. He's like, yo, they sell weed out of this house over here. So we go over there. And um, he's like, yo, go knock on the door. And I was like a scared fucking twerpy kid. You know, in my friends, I was, I guess, the funny whatever kid. Um, but I was like a, I was like a scared twerpy fucking white kid. I go and I knock on the door. And they're like, yo, I'm like, I don't even know what to say. I was just like, yo, what's up? They're like, what's up? I was like, what's up, man? You know, and then John came over because I guess he knew them and he just wanted to fuck with me. And um, he's like, yo, we need like two Knicks. And they were like, 
they just looked at me. I guess, and I was with him, and I had the right, uh, I guess, outfit on. I'm like, all right, you know. <laughs> and they opened the shoebox, and it was two bags of weed, and whatever. You buy, you buy the weed, and then that's it, you know. But then as I got older, you know, older only means, like, it could be three months, six months later, a year later. Like, you know, then you're like, okay, well, once you start knocking on doors, when people tell you where the shit is at, then you don't even care. And... I went to school with a lot of uh, with a lot of uh, people who knew people, I guess. And then I hung around with those people, and then I became somebody. I, I became somebody myself, you know. So even when I eventually, when I would roll up to the weed spot, then they know me. They'd be like, "Yo, what up?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm here for this, this, and this," you know. But doing, but the, I guess reminiscing is like, listen, man. There's nothing like, you know. We used to call it going on a mission. There's nothing like going on a mission, man. When you're a young kid, you know, again, you know, nobody's, unless the car is stolen. We didn't have stolen cars all the time. But when we had them, it was nice. But at the times we didn't, y'all bros, you know, I had my beeper. What was it? I don't remember the number. I was going to say 917. Uh... I don't know. Yeah, it was a 917 number, though. But I used to, yeah. Anyway, so I had my beeper. They paid you. They're like, yo, we're over here. So I would have to walk. And when I mean walk, like, bro, you're walking half a mile. Sometimes a mile. Bro, you're walking a whole mile just to meet up with your friends in the fucking blizzard. And you're like, okay, I'm bringing this. You know, if I could steal some liquor out of my parents' uh, house, I would bring it. Um, a lot of times I just wouldn't, I'd just go to the store and buy it. We'd meet by Lucy's, um, Lucy's Deli. It was on the corner of Twin Avenue, Maple Avenue. So I'd meet there, you know, and I could have stopped at any store on the way. Was there a st- I don't think there was a store on the way I used to walk. But back then, 91, 92, every store would sell you whatever you wanted, you know. So I would just meet up with my people and you go knocking on doors. And it was beautiful. Just that freedom, like, yo, just being out there with your friends. Or you go to the bootleg uh, liquor store, you know, which was in somebody's house. You knock on the door because back then you couldn't even buy uh, liquor on Sundays. So they had all these bootleg spots. You can just go. You knock on the window. Um, and they would uh, they would give you. You'd have to pay more than what you would pay in the store. But that's it, man. And it was like a beautiful life being that young. <laughs> You know, just going on these missions. And, you know, I uh, I typically would have a, um, uh, like a small, like a small radio in my book bag. Jansport book bag, because I didn't fuck around. I had the indigo purple shit. Jansport book bag. You know, I had like nice, uh, I had, had Chicago Bulls starter puffy jacket. I had that. Obviously, Tim's, I still wear Tim's to this day. To this day! I still wear Tim's to this day. Um, yeah, that was it. And the, the big Dookie Champion hoodies. I used to wear those. Um, or uh, the Carl Kanai. I had the, bro, I had the Carl Kanai hoodie with the buckle in the middle. The, a, a black one. And people used to sweat me for it. They were like, Jesus. Yeah, I had that shit. Yeah, and it was winter time. It was winter wonderland. You know, it was winter wonderland. And there's no like there's no consequences at that time. You know, my parents had already given up on me, whatever. They're like, dude, this guy's out of his fucking mind. You know, yeah. And it's just freedom out there in the snow, one, two in the morning. And you're with your people. And um, sometimes you run into other people. Sometimes you rumble. Sometimes you don't. You just be like, all right, well, what are you guys bringing to the table? What are we bringing to the table? And, you know, you just get obliterated and listen to music all night. You know? But eventually that wasn't, that wouldn't be enough. And then, you know, as you get older, other stuff gets introduced. More drugs, more alcohol. Alcohol, whatever. But, you know. The drug game and really kicked off. 
So, yeah, I miss that time. Or just even so that wet the weather reminds me of that. But it has it doesn't get cold anymore. It just doesn't get cold anymore. I mean, today I'll tell you right now, it's fucking, bro, it's fucking hot out. It's fucking hot. It's fucking forty six degrees, man. It's fucking crazy. It's forty six degrees tomorrow. It's gonna be high. Uh, whoa! Well, tomorrow's gonna rain. Oh, Cause I gotta go swimming polar bear style tomorrow. Yeah, it's gonna fucking rain tomorrow. I don't mind swimming in the rain, but yeah, yeah. So it's like in the forties, bro. When I was a kid, it'd be, it'd be a fucking five feet of snow the week of Christmas already. You know, we would have had that a bunch of times, but people don't believe in global warming, so I guess it doesn't it doesn't fucking um it doesn't exist to some folks. So, but whatever. So the good thing is that, like, I can look back on those experiences in my life and I can be like, wow, that was a great time and that was a beautiful, my heart is full thinking about that. You know, obviously it ended up in fucking a car wreck. And I can tell you it wasn't long after that till I was in hospitals, you know, within a year or so. Hospitals, crashing cars. Um, I think I totaled one. I totaled two of my own parents' fucking cars under the influence. Um, oh, no, one of them I wasn't driving. I was too drunk to drive my own parents' car that I took without their permission, and somebody else fucking crashed it. And I ended up, you know, blasting a fucking a big... Uh, had a big cut on my head. Yeah, it was crazy. That, you know, baby came. Um, I went to... Uh, I got locked up twice, I think, maybe two or three times. And... um they pulled me out of school to go to court one time on one of those stolen cars. Um, what else? I got thrown out of school. All of that happened within two years of me having those kind of beautiful knock on the door. I'll give you ten dollars and you give me these things. Within two years, all of the all of that happened. And if I think about it longer. I could tell you a lot more stuff, you know, that content. And it wasn't, I guess it wasn't consequences because I didn't care. But yeah, within two years, my life was already getting fucking crazy with it. So, you know, you, you know, you got to pay to play, you know, and then eventually you don't want to, uh, you don't want to pay anymore. And then you end up, uh, you know, you end up, if you're lucky, if you're fortunate, you end up, you end up where I ended up, you know. End up finding some communities, end up getting sober, end up growing up. You know, you grow up and just you change and your life changes and your perspective changes. I was thinking about this because I went to this meeting yesterday um, that was out of my, I wouldn't say out of my, I could say out of my comfort zone. Like, no, it's nice sometimes to go, listen, the meetings that I go to, motherfuckers know me. You know, I've been around a long time. Even when I, if I run into an NA meeting, that's, that's around it, like, oh, that's him, you know, um, because my name is good and not like before, like, you know, it evolved. Like when you're a kid, like, yo, my name is good because I could go to that weed spot and other people can't go. My name is good because I can go to this store, uh, and I can buy uh, liquor. I could buy beer. I could do whatever. And nobody's going to fuck with me. But if you go, they're going to fucking kick the, they're going to kick the shit out of you. But my name is good. You know, so my name used to, the kids don't even know what that means anymore, but I joke about it. My name used to ring out. If I said that to my kids, they'd be like, what? I was like, yeah, my name used to fucking ring out, bro. But for all the wrong reasons. Now they do it for the right reasons, which is, uh, I appreciate that. Anyway, so I roll up to this meeting. And um, yeah, it's, it's not a meeting I normally go to, which is cool. Um, because I also like to, you know, go and be like a little bit anonymous, which is perfect, you know, I, I like to I'm not be a spectator, but just go. And when I went, I went with my boy, uh, uh, Jim. He's like, oh, I'm going to this meeting over here. And it was right near where I work. So I was like, all right, dude, I'm going to go over there. Boom, I meet him. It was a men's meeting. Whatever, I roll up there. Anonymity right away out the window. Some fucking guy's like, oh, aren't you blah, blah. You know, don't I know you from this meeting or don't you? I'm trying to remember what he said. He said something. He said that he heard me, uh, asked me, he knew my, the, my home group, the Greenwood. He's like, yo, didn't you come with this other kid to PAX, this other meeting? 
and just blow up, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, that was me. Dog, that was like fucking five months ago. And he was like, yeah, I remember. And I was like, okay, how you doing? <laughs> like, how you doing? You know, which is, you know, whatever. You leave your mark. You know, you leave your mark in the way that you can. And um, and it, pff, I just do it being myself. Like, I'm getting up here rambling. You know, it's uh, oddly enough, it's a little bit more structured where I, you know, I try and uh, deliver a message when I... Um, when I go speak at these meetings or at conferences or whatever. But either way, so we're in this meeting and this guy's up there and he's qualifying and he's telling his fucking story and he's talking about, you know, all this, uh, yeah, he's mentioning fucking, you know, meditation gurus and all these other Buddhists and whatever. And I'm just like, dude, what the but the guy, he's almost got, he's only, I don't like to say only, but he's only almost got two years. So I'm like, all right, now we're listening, okay, which is no problem. You know, meanwhile, I, I guess the reason why maybe some of the the accolades, if, I, if you want to call them that, that I get, well, I wouldn't say accolades. The respect that I get is because, like, I'm the same age as a lot of these other people in some ways, except, you know, I've been around uh, and I've been sober a long fucking time. And I texted my wife on the way that I was like, bro, I said, I'm going to this meet the men's meeting over here. She was like, woohoo, and just gave me a thumbs up. Um, and I was like, yeah, I said, and I'm thinking about it. I was like, dude, I can't believe I've been sober for fucking 20 years, man. That's a long time. So, and tone saying, um, yeah. So we get there, and, um, you know, the, the inexperience right away is like apparent. You know, and then, you know, the guy shares his story. Then they start going around the room. You know, the guy's talking about like, yo, he had, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what God is. And then he calls. He said, like, I guess his sponsor or whatever told him to call like 20 people or 10 people, however many people, and ask them what God is. 20 people in recovery, ask them what God is. Or what the higher power is. And he said nobody can answer him. And it's just dawning on me now that he said that. Because th it set the fucking tone. Because as when he was done sharing, I mean, obviously he's, he's sober and he's working on himself. He's on his way. He's on his way to some place that, I, that I'm already here. And I, I've been here for some time. But he's on his way. And then um, as they start going around the room sharing, he sets that tone and other people start talking about that they don't know what the higher power is or they don't know what God is or whatever, or they're having trouble connecting. And they have all these, you know, they have all these, um, I don't know how to describe it, but they have all these, I don't want to say excuses, but they have these like stories about why they don't believe in a higher power or why they don't believe in God or why they don't believe in a God, a power greater than themselves and all this other shit. And I'm like, you know, you got one guy, you know, the first guy who allegedly called 10 people and then all these other people that are in this room. And then right away, I'm like, dude, is nobody fucking teaching these kids? Is nobody showing them? Is nobody loving them? Is that what's, fucking happening on earth right now is nobody share or who the fuck are they calling that they don't have anybody that they don't have anybody they can reach out to that is like bro bro fucking god is everything the lord's grace is like it's like a fucking a shower that is the warmest and most comfortable like texture on your skin running 24 hours a day. I'm not going to say some other people have said, and I think Rogan said it once, somebody told him that, that doing heroin is like getting a hug from God. And that's pretty close. So... Heroin and God is like neck and neck with the level of relief 
and the level of understanding and the level of love that you get. It's like, oh my God, man. I want to feel like this all the time. And that experience is foreign to these men. I mean, I heard the whole time I was there. We stayed for an hour. And it's so, and so then I start, now I'm going to do this in like real time. So then the, the, the share starts going around. I'm like, dude, I'm, you know, I didn't even want to say anything. I wanted to just go there and just chill. Because I do that a lot. Unless somebody asks me to speak at a meeting, like, I don't want to go there and raise my fucking hand and just pontificate whatever. Like, you know, I get a lot from listening, you know. And if so, and something like this that was moving me, I was like, bro, I have to put my fucking hand up, you know. These motherfuckers are lost, bro. It's like crazy. So they're going one by one, each person sharing for three minutes. And now I'm taken out of the moment because it's coming up to me. I'm like, bro, I have to fucking spray this whole corner. I'm like, dude, this place needs a fucking lobotomy. They don't have fucking, they don't have anybody steering this ship. If you have all these people that are in here that are talking about struggling, staying sober, they're doing, checking off these boxes. Oh, I'm I'm not drinking. I'm going to meetings. I'm praying. Like, who are you praying to? If you don't believe in God, like, who are you praying to? You know? Or who are you praying for? Does it even matter if you fucking, yeah. And like all these, they're like checking off all these boxes. And, um, yeah, they're struggling. Anyway, so I'm like, okay. I can help. I got to do it. Um. You know, not as freely as I would speak on this microphone by saying that they need a lobotomy. But if I share my own experience on how I found uh, the Lord and how I surrendered my life to that love, and it's a very palatable thing, and it's not some cosmic fucking whatever, that ain't it. You know, well, that ain't it for me. But that definitely ain't it from, that's not it from the program. So by the time it gets to the guy right before me, he's the last person to share. And each person sharing, it's getting worse and worse on how little they know or how little they, they have any experience with that love and with that direction in your life. With that light that's like saying, this is the fucking way. This is the way. Like, I am not lost. You know what I'm saying? I'm on the path. This is the way. They didn't, bro, it was crazy. So by the time it gets, you know, it's almost like after every share, I'm like, ugh, in my mind, right? And then I'm sitting next to my boy who doesn't, also doesn't really believe you know, and he's been around a long time, so whatever. Not drinking and not getting high is not sober. I mean, it's sober. It's not recovery. You know, it's sobriety. Okay, you're not drinking, you're not getting high, but are you happy, bro? You know, are you happy? So, point is, by the time it gets to me, they got to take a fucking break. And do some announcements. So I'm like, oh, now I don't get to share. Now in order for me to share, instead of going in order, I have to raise my fucking hand. And of course, these motherfuckers, they don't know me, right? So now, like, my, my, uh, my popularity card is, stays in my pocket. If I was at a meeting that I go to all the time, number one, it wouldn't have been this godless. Uh, and number two, if I put my hand up, the likely the the likelihood of me being called on is high because I don't always put my fucking hand up, and they know that you know when I do it's for something constructive. So each person after the next one after the other was just like, you know, 
Yeah, it was just bad in that sense. I mean, it was a good AA meeting, everybody, camaraderie and whatever. But, um, yeah, yeah, they just needed some real direction, you know. And then, and then I drove home, so it was an hour in traffic on the way home, 45 minutes in traffic. And uh, I smoked a cigar, and I was like, um, yeah, I ain't going back to that fucking place. You know, on a Friday night, the meeting is at 8. It's all the way on the other side of town from where I live. 45-minute drive. So, I mean, from 8 to 9, people babble. After the meeting or whatever, they chill. And they want it. They, a lot of them, then they do fellowship. With, they all go to a restaurant in, in the neighborhood, some Mexican place, and they all eat. So this is like young men, because it's a men's group. Young men in recovery that are just, they're trying to build. You know what I'm saying? They're literally trying to build. And, um, and I was just like, it's like, bro, that is not my life anymore. It's not. Like knocking on the door of the weed spot. It's not my life. I've moved on. And then I have this conversation with myself. And this is all like ego shit. But I'm like. I should just keep going back there. Until somebody calls on me from the floor and then I have two and a half minutes that will give them a different light than what they have and then I could fucking run away you know so I'm thinking the great I am I'm gonna go save everybody I'm gonna go save these people and that's a hard it's a hard thing to wrestle with when you can help somebody because you can These guys were fucking struggling. You know, the point of the recovery 12-step program is to help you find a power greater than yourself. You'll have a spiritual awakening, and it will help you solve all of your problems. All of them, not just drugs and alcohol. It will help you solve your marital problems, your financial problems. It's I haven't done... I've done a lot of, outs, out, they call it outside work. I've done a lot of therapy and this and that and whatever outside of AA to, for me to really run a productive, happy life. But the foundation and 85% of it is in uh, recovery. You know, so then you, you know, you grapple with that. You say, okay, bro, I can go back there. And I'm like, dude, do I really want to fucking... Maybe, listen, some, maybe somebody else, I mean, I'm sure, I'm not the only one on earth, somebody else is going to go there or somebody else maybe is there that didn't put their hand up that is like, yo, um, listen, this program is about motherfucking God, bro. And you, you make your own God. Call him whatever you want. It's about finding that love, that love for yourself. That love for others. Love. What does love mean? What does love mean? What does love look like? What does love sound like? Let me look up the definition. Uh, And then maybe I'll tell you what I think. Definition. Boom. An intense feeling of deep affection a great interest and pleasure in something. Feel deep affection for somebody. Like or enjoy very much. I don't know. Love, for me, is getting rid of self and allowing others to matter and giving them space uh, to express, to be themselves. That's what love is. And helping them. Selflessly. The only thing I get out of helping others is gratification. That I'm able, that God put me in a position where I can help people. 
That's my assignment, is to help whenever, wherever I can. You know, and what conversations I have with myself is like, I can lose myself by just searching for people who don't have, who don't have, um, what's the words? You don't have whatever it is that only time will give you. There are certain things that only time and experience will ever give you. Until then, it's theory. So I can just run from myself into other people and be like kind of like this big shot. Or... Um, I don't have to run anywhere. But I also know that I have to help people. That's part of the way that I live this life. I can't just be existing. So I help as many people where I can, when I can. There's times when, uh, yeah, it's just, it's a lifestyle. It's part of my personality of who I am. I've had this psychic change from doing those steps. You know, you have a personality change. You know what really changed, honestly? My fucking priorities. What really matters? I guess you can say, like, everything counts, but not everything matters. So, what really matters? You know, what really matters is me knowing, not speculation, but me knowing inside that I'm going to be okay, that I'm already okay, that I have all the love that I need for me to be okay. I get it from God. And it's because of my devotion to him and to what he wants me to do. When people say, I don't know what God wants for me, that I identify with. But I know that it's very easy what he wants you to do. And who he wants you to be. He wants you to be somebody who's getting, seeking to be closer to him by being closer to others because that's where the power is. The power is not in you. The power comes from you. And you get to affect other people in a positive way in every interaction in your life. Does that mean you're perfect? One million percent no. Do I have to apologize? I wouldn't even say on a regular basis. I wouldn't even say that. So I don't have to a lot. Just because I'm, I don't fucking, I'm not really a dick. There's few people in my life that are uh, hurt by things that I say or do. And I know this because I spend a lot of time creating an environment where if they are, when they are ready, they can step to me about it. And say, I don't like that you did this. I don't like that you said that. It hurt me in this way. And I won't be like, no, come on. You know, I was just joking. And blah, 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 blah. Or, but no, but you said this. I'd be like, like, I'm sorry. You can, I always say sorry first because I'm sorry. I am. I'm sorry. Could, explain to me. Okay. And I'm like, all right, well, this is what I was thinking. You know? 
And that's it. We try to have some middle ground. Nobody's trying to convert me to fucking whatever. You know, and if I don't agree or, you know, I don't have to comply. But as long as they know that a dialogue can happen, you know, and that's a beautiful thing. I didn't have that. I had it in the street with my friends. Nobody, everything was on the surface because we were all hurting in different ways. And that's what I mean, like saying like, oh, it was just like a lot of fun. You're out there doing wild, crazy shit. Yeah, man. There were other kids, again, other kids that I was that I, that I was cool with that were smart. And you know what? I was pretty, I used to be pretty smart until I took this fucking vaccine. I used to be pretty smart. Um, yeah. You know, part of me wishes that I was smarter. That was like always dream, like, wow, I wish I was smarter. But I could... I could keep up in my own way and I could matter in my own way. But again, I had friends, bro, that they, they weren't out there in the street. They were doing all the right stuff. They were at home doing homework and term papers and studying and this and that and, you know, whatever. And I, and I, you know, I played in the band in school and a lot of the kids in the band, there wasn't no thugs in the fucking band. There weren't no alcoholics, drug addicts in the fucking school band. I played it's the trumpet. We call it the horn. I played the horn really well. Like, really well. I played from seventh grade until I was asked to leave school, which was like 11th grade. So four years. But I played, and I was fucking good. I wasn't... I was never good enough to be first chair, which was fine. I was good enough to be sec- in the second chair, you know? I was never good enough to be first, but I was good enough to be second. And that was cool, and it gave me something to, to, to strive for, you know? The guys that were in first chair, the ones that I knew, they, all, they took lessons. I never took lessons. You know, I never took lessons. I just, I would practice every day for like 30 minutes. I loved it. I loved playing music. I love music, if you can't tell from this show, you know? Yeah. So I had, you know, I had people all over the spectrum. And I'm getting into ramble territory here. So I'll wrap it up. But yeah, I guess the challenge is going to be like, you know, who do I want to be? Do I, do I have the, I can just go and be myself wherever I am. And that meeting is very inconvenient for me. So the likelihood of me going back is very small. Um, and that's just the truth, uh, because I don't want to get home at fucking nine forty five at night on a Friday night. Cause that's not my life anymore. I like to be home as early as I can get all my stuff out of the way. Uh, you know, so I can be with my wife because she's my favorite person on earth. And, um, you know, so Yeah. But maybe, who knows? Either way, I um, hope you guys have a great uh, Christmas. I hope Fall of a Christmas uh, gives you uh, everything you um, everything you deserve. You know, if you don't have it already, let me try and find this thing because I really enjoyed. Um, I really enjoyed this thing. Hold on one second. It was a. Uh, yeah, it was a uh, an Instagram uh, reel. So funny. This little British kid. He was fucking hilarious. Talking about Father Christmas. I'll play this uh, just for fun, and then uh, we'll get out of here. So hang on. Let me turn on the, the speaker. The speaker. Yeah. Is it? We hooked up? All right. Stand by. Hold on. Yeah, hopefully this is the one. Okay. I'm going to turn the volume up. Okay, here we go. This is live, so it come, if it comes out crazy, I'm sorry. I'm going to move the mic. Here we go. Absolutely. That's why, you, but that's why you're on the naughty list. I swear, trust me. Well, that's why you're on the naughty list, because, because you're being naughty right now. So you're going to be a naughty list if you keep talking like that. No, no, because Father Christmas is not being very nice to me. Because you're being naughty, so you're on the naughty list. No, I'm not. I'm on 
a good list, actually. You're not, because you, you're not, because you ain't being good. I am on a good list. If you keep saying that word again and again and again, I'm not on my list. Father Christmas r rung me last night when I was at work yes. and said, you better tell Jackson to start being a good boy or he's going to stay on the naughty list and he won't get no presents for Christmas. That's what he said to me. So you've got to start being a good boy. Then I will do what I've got to him. No, no, you won't do it. No, what? I'm going to punch him. Punch his beard off. You're just silly, man. They trust me. I'm not on bad list. You're on the naughty list, mate. Well, I'm not. <laughs> all right, guys. I love you. Like and subscribe on all podcast platforms. <laughs> Share with your friends. Uh, don't be anonymous. If you see me, it's all good. All right. Um, peace.